Not highlighting his his uh his voice. Do you hear me, Pastor? Oh, now we can. Go ahead. Thank you. Speak right to the point. Do you hear, do you hear me? Yes. yes okay. Uh, <laughs> pardon me? Oh, the question is... Do you, do you, I can hear you. Pardon me, pardon, Pastor. I can hear you. I'm going to ask you the question again. What else is the rest of the secret in verse 4? After the Messiah says, He awakens me morning by morning, what else does the Messiah say? That's part of the Wicked secret. My ear. Wicked my ear. Right? Keep going. Wicked my ear to listen. Like being told. Wicked my ear. So, Pastor, I asked you a question is the Messiah is wanting to be taught by who? I'm asking you a question. I think you lost, okay? The, the Messiah wants to be taught by who? Who does the Messiah, who was the Messiah taught by when he was walking on earth? Every morning. Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me okay? Right. Yes, yes, uh, sorry, this, yeah. Okay, who, who was the Messiah spending time with morning by morning? It is God, God the Father. Amen. So my friends, thank you, Pastor, thank you. So my friends, here's the deal. First challenge between now and tomorrow morning when we meet for online and local is... If you're taking notes, the first principle of living as a daily disciple of Jesus, okay, first principle of living daily as a disciple of Jesus, if you're taking notes, first one is make a covenant with God each night to wake you up whenever he chooses to, morning by morning, so that you can be taught. What? What? Pardon me? It's my seventh day from the Father. Amen. We have a sister over here that says it's her seventh day of doing that. And it's one of the deans, the AUP. Praise the Lord. Amen? So, uh, online and local, I want to know if all of us will take the challenge and will be prepared to report on this challenge tomorrow. That's the first one. If you're willing to do that, everybody put your thumbs up, both online and local. You make a covenant with God tonight before you fall asleep and you say, God, you can even lift your Bible up to heavens before you go to sleep and you say, God, according to Isaiah 50 verse 4, you awakened the Messiah morning by morning. So please do the same for me. Amen. Amen? Amen, pastors? Praise God. Now, next thing. Next thing. The question is, the question is, what do you do next? The first thing when you wake up in the morning after God wakes you up, what do you do? I'll tell you what some of you do because I got some testimonies already on this campus. And I've talked to other pastors around the world. I asked them, what do you do when God wakes you up? They say, simple, pastor. They say, I reach out like this. And I'm trying to find my alarm clock to slap it down so I will not hear anything from it. And then I say, what do you do? What do you do with God? And then I go back to sleep. <laughs> now, students, teachers, pastors, if God takes the time to wake you up, you'd better have a plan of what you're going to do next, right? And so the question is, what is the very first thing you do when you wake up. So right now, turn to, to just one other person, online, someone in the room, ask each other, what's the very first thing you do presently in your life? Like what you have been doing. What's your very first priority? Is it to run to the bathroom? Is it to, is it to go and check who sent you a message? 
Is it to eat something because you're so hungry? Is it to go on a run? What's your very first thing you do as soon as your feet go out of bed? That's my question as we start this next part. I answer, ask somebody next to you, what, what you do? Okay, <clears throat> I want to start locally. Uh, let's be honest, we're not here to bug each other, we're not here to judge each other, we're here to learn from each other. What is the first thing you do when you first wake up, presently? Starting right here, what's your first uh, agenda? Yes? So the first thing he does is he turns off his alarm clock or puts it on snooze probably, right? Okay, what else? What? <laughs> he says it's to pray. This brother says his first priority is to pray, or, but if he has an emergency, he runs to the bathroom first. Uh, what else? What's your first thing you do when you first wake up? Right, right, uh, oh here, and then we'll come here next. Ah, she sings, I am thine, O Lord. Ooh, that's beautiful. Amen. Amen. You know what? Let's just pause and, and sing that song. Yes. Because the attitude we need when we first wake up is actually to surrender. So would someone, do you know this? Can you lead us in that or not? Or not? Okay. Okay. Who wants to lead us in that? And, and pastors, we're going to sing... Uh, say it again, uh, the title. I am thine, O Lord. I am thine, O Lord. Oh, draw me near. Draw me near. For those of you online, uh, we're going to sing the song, Draw Me Near. This is what our sister does when she first wakes up in the morning. Every morning, you sing that song? Okay, so go ahead. Okay, just one stanza. <coughs> Amen. I invite you to do this in teams of twos. Again, for our online audience, if you have someone in the house, your, your spouse or a friend or family member, <clears throat> please go in your Bibles to Ephesians. Ephesians. You see, many times we, we have all kinds of priorities, but they don't have anything to do with Jesus when we first wake up. Am I being fair? Many times they're just about busyness, they're about checking our phone, they're about all kinds of things. And we want to go, oh pardon me, I said the wrong one. It's Philippians, sorry, sorry, sorry. Philippians chapter 2. In Philippians chapter 2, 
please read with somebody else in the room with you online or here locally. Just one other person. Read Philippians 2 verses 5 through 11 and see what what is the hmm what is the title of Jesus what is the capacity of Jesus and what is our response supposed to be to Jesus based on what this passage says about Jesus Christ am I clear online I'm asking you to read this passage what does it tell you about the capacity of Jesus and our response to him Okay, you're on. They'll give you a couple minutes to study this passage. <clears throat> Okay, uh, to my online audience, if you could be getting ready right now, I'm going to ask for two volunteers to speak to the issue of what does this tell us about Jesus Christ? Uh, not only what he suffered, but I want you to zero in specifically how has God the Father honored him? What is his capacity today? Okay, and how should we respond to him? So if you can just give short answers. Okay, everybody. It's short and sweet. I'm going to start with online, and I'm asking the, our online, what does this passage tell us about Jesus? So I have to come up here because Pastor Kenneth is going to identify who is giving me a thumbs up, who will speak to this right now, looking online. Who's going to speak right over here? Uh, what's the name? Pastor Peter. Pastor Peter, you're online. Go ahead, Pastor Peter. Oh, no, we can't. Jesus Christ humbled himself. Oh, yes, he humbled himself. Amen. Yes. Okay, I'm going to go to another pastor or church planner. What else can we learn about Jesus Christ? After he humbled himself, what happened to him? Someone else, give me a thumbs up if you're willing to speak to that. Someone else? Oh, here we go right here. Uh, the pastor is Fern Ferdinand. Please, go ahead. You're online. Uh, in verse 7. Uh, oh, excuse me one second, pastor. Hold on one pastor. Uh, I'm hearing too much talking back here. If we can remember, it goes both ways. I want you to listen to them. I want them to listen to you, okay? So go ahead, pastor. Thank you. He emptied himself at any right. Say it one more time, please. He did what? He emptied emptied himself of any rights. He emptied himself of his rights. Would you agree, local audience? Yes. Wow, he emptied himself of his rights. Okay, now I'm going to go to local. What, what happened after Jesus emptied himself? What happened after he humbled himself? What did God the Father do for Jesus? Starting right over here. God exalted him. How much did he exalt him? He gave him the highest name. So based on the fact that he exalted him, gave him the highest name, then I'm going to ask somebody in this group here, how should we respond according to the word of God? What should we do with our mouth and what should we do with our bodies? We should confess that Jesus is what? Lord. And what should we do beyond confessing? What should you do with your body? Look closely. The knee should bow. So we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, <clears throat> and we bow. 
Now, let's get really, really practical. Uh, I just, er well, I, I didn't erase yet. Look at this issue right here. <clears throat> Out of 53 online, 33 are surrendering to Jesus as Lord. Uh, I'm a pastor that, that too much of my life, I did not surrender to Jesus daily. I'll be the first to say that, okay? I'm not, I'm not throwing rocks. And of our local team, out of 34, 15 do this regularly. So is this an issue for us? It is. Online and for us locally. We are not fully surrendering to Jesus as Lord. Right? We're not. Is, is this uh, passage calling us to surrender to Him? Let's go to one more passage real quick to, to deepen the point. Let's go to Matthew 28 verse 18. Matthew 28 verse 18. And if anybody is wanting to take a picture of this, you should do it now because I'm going to erase these results. Uh, are we all good? I'm going to erase them. Okay. And in teams of twos, please read Matthew 28 verse 18. Matthew 28 verse 18 and see what this adds to the picture. Okay, everybody, would someone read that passage locally here? Sister, would you read that? Okay, online, uh, what does Jesus say he has? Online, I'm looking for someone, give me a thumbs up. What, be specific, what does Jesus say he has? Let's go right to and Pastor Anden. And death. And death. Authority. How much authority? All authority has given him. And where does he have this authority? Uh, from the Father. From the Father. But where I'm saying, what's the domain of that authority? Does he have authority heaven for and heaven and earth? Doesn't that mean he has all authority? Amen? Amen. Now I want to ask you a question. <clears throat> I erased it now. But many of us are not surrendering to Jesus. We're acting as if Jesus does not have full authority. <clears throat> now, I invite you to draw a picture online. If you have, do you have a piece of paper? Do you have a piece of paper online? So please take, take out a piece of paper locally right here. I invite you to draw this, but then also I'm going to ask online people to help me on the board. Get ready. We're going to move very, very quick. I want you to think about life, your life, and I want you to think about the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Now this is supposed to be a crown. Whether you think it's a crown or not, I'm sorry. Okay? But I want you to imagine a crown with beautiful gems in it, okay? Okay? I want you to imagine that this is not just any crown. This is whose crown? It's Jesus' crown. It's the crown of Jesus Christ himself, okay? So, and this is, this is a special crown, a sparkling, sparkling crown. This represents the Lordship of Christ. Now, are you drawing this, everybody? Now, this is an exercise you can do with children, you can do it with teens, you can do it with university students, you can do it with adults. Pastors, you can do this in your church. I'd encourage you to do this, actually, with small groups in the church. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to give you just a moment privately to write down what is currently under the Lordship of Christ in your life. Like, go like this. And I want you to write what is currently under the Lordship of Christ. In other words, it is fully under the authority of Christ in your life. 
And then after you do that, right out here, what's not under the authority of Christ. Let me be very, before you write, let me give you examples again. Listen. When I held on for a time in my life, a few years ago, when I had deep bitterness towards another brother in Christ, I can tell you right now, in that time in my life, I would say bitterness or my attitude was definitely not under the Lordship of Christ. Amen? Are you with me? So you could say my attitude was not under the Lordship of Christ during that time. And, and specifically, bitterness was not under the Lordship of Christ. When, again, I'm going to be very blunt. When I had times in my ministry in the past, when I kept going to YouTube again and again and again, when I was tired, trying to find something funny, trying to find this and that, and wasting time on that instead of running to Christ and saying, Jesus, I need more of the Holy Spirit. I need more comfort from you. I need more help from you. I would say in that era that, that um, oh, how can we sum it up? My phone or I, I can say my, yeah, social media. I can say social media uh, for me in that time in my life was definitely not under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I am asking you not to look at each other Please keep your eyes to your own paper. Online, I'm encouraging you, my, my brothers, please answer this question privately for the next few minutes. What's under the Lordship of Christ that's truly honoring him as King of kings and Lord of lords? What parts of your life and what parts are not honoring the Lordship of Christ? Are we clear? Are we clear online? Are we clear online? Okay. So please, pastors, please, locally, I'm going to give you a couple minutes. See what you come up with for your answer to that. It's a, this is a tough exercise, a challenging exercise. I've done this a number of times in my life, and I needed to do it. I'm going to get a piece of paper and do it myself all over again. Because I want God to search my heart. We'll give you just one more minute, everybody. One more minute. <clears throat> Are we ready? Are we ready, everybody? Now, uh, online, I have, I am being vulnerable with you and also in front of the students because I am not here in the Philippines to impress anybody. I am here to call us to radical commitment to Jesus Christ in the end of time, period. 
So I'm willing to be vulnerable about my own shortcomings over, the, over time because uh, if, I'm, if I'm not vulnerable with you, I'm actually teaching you to not be vulnerable yourself with honesty. And so pastors, I'm going to start with you and I'm going to ask, is there any pastor or church planner willing to say, uh, very simply, you don't have to, like some things on our list may only be between us and God, not to share with anybody, but is there any will, a pastor willing to say what you believe, is, like give me one thing that you believe is, is definitely under the Lordship of Christ and give me maybe one thing that you think is outside of it that God wants you to tuck under his crown. Are you with me, everybody? And I'm going to come to students next, but I'm going right to online because uh, we are people like anybody else. Pastors and leaders, uh, faculty members, we're all but just people. We're all just followers of Jesus Christ. Anybody willing to, to personalize that and say uh, one thing under the Lordship of Christ and one thing that you're convicted right now needs to come under the Lordship of Christ? Thumbs up if you're willing to speak to it. Is it uh, Pastor, how do you, is it this one? No? Oh, thumbs up if you're willing to speak. I need to see your thumbs up if you can speak to it. I'm going to the second screen right now. And maybe I'm looking. No? Or all of you saying, Pastor Don, please don't ask us. The question is, is there any pastor or church planner that's willing to, to be as, as open as I was and say what's, what's one thing under the crown of Jesus Christ right now and one thing that needs to come under the crown of Jesus. Thumbs up if you're willing to speak to it. Oh, right here? Yes? Uh, it's it's uh, John. John, please. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, the, you're online. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Let's, let's really listen up, everybody. Okay, so the one that is under the authority of Christ for me is my future. Amen. Praise God. And the one that is not is actually I, um, my full time. Your full time. My, yes, my time. Oh, your time, time. Yes, yes. Ooh, that's a big one. How many of you relate to that? That time, sometimes we act like we own the time instead of God owns it, right? Okay, I'm going to ask for one more online and then I'm going to go to our local audience. One more. What would you say is under the Lordship of Christ and what needs to be pulled under the Lordship of Christ? Anybody else with another response? Thumbs up. We have one right here. And it, I don't see a name though. Don Moredos. Don Moredos. Okay, go ahead, Pastor. Oh, you're, uh, no audio yet. No audio. Unmute. Unmute your, uh, Pardon me? Uh, tell him to unmute. Uh, do you have yours on mute? Pastor, do you have yours on mute? Try it now. No, there's no audio. Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, can you try anything else? One second. We're trying to get you off of mute. Try it again. This one right here we're trying to get. Yeah. We're trying, brother. Hold on one second. You're sure you're, uh, you're not on mute, right, Pastor? No, it's, it's still no, no audio. Hold on. Hold on one second. Pastor Rex to the Rex rescue. Okay, now all of you are on, so watch out, everybody. Yeah. Okay. Can you speak? Can you speak, Pastor? Speak, Pastor. Pastor Don. Pastor which? Don. Don. Pastor Don. Still nothing. No, you still are. Sorry. It's not, there's something, there's something where you're mute. Okay, I go local now. Everybody get ready to move. Are you ready? Students, please come up here and as quick as you can, use these two and be honest, anybody that's willing, fill this board up with things that are under the Lordship of Christ and things that are not under. Anything you're willing to put, let's put out like a realism picture of our life 
on campus. It's yours. Anybody that wants to, go ahead. Online, we're going to see what kind of picture we have of reality real quick. We'll see what happens. <coughs> While the students are doing that, I'm going to ask you online, uh, how many of you, I'm going to ask you online, did you, did you draw this picture and fill it in? If yes, put your thumbs up. How many of you actually did this exercise at home? I see some, yes, more and more of you, yes. Okay, next screen. If we can do the next screen, I'm going to see the uh, rest of our audience, online audience. If you did this exercise at home, hey, good, good, good. Many of you are. Some of you are looking at me like, oh, not so much. Okay. Very good. Let's see what the students came up with. Anybody last ones before I, I address it? Come quick if you're going to add any. Come quick if you're going to add any not, and not mentioned. Okay. Okay. Now, if we can zero in right here, my friend. Okay, online, can you see it okay or not? Thumbs up if you can see the, the chart. Okay, so here we have, under the Lordship of Christ, vacation, woo, that's good. <laughs> love, amen. I hope that means their love life, I hope that means that. Uh, future, very good. Dressing, you know, praise the Lord for that, whoever wrote that. It's a, it's a beautiful thing when our, the way we dress is under the Lordship of Christ. Not, and then we're not the boss. The problem we get into dressing is when we're the boss of how we dress. Woo, it can be dangerous. Okay, spiritual gifts, amen. Future partner, amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Ministry, yes, my talents, very, very good. Now let's go to the tough things here. Beside the ones I put, we said money. Sometimes the use of our money has not come under the Lordship of Christ. And by the way, a way we can tell that is... By the way, online and local, if you want to check and see who is Lord over your money, go and look at how you've been spending money the last month and see who is being honored by your spending. Now, first and foremost, how much of, uh, let's say that I'm going to make up a figure. So you use pesos, right? Let's say you have 100 pesos. How much of that is God's? 20%? 20%? 10%? I'm getting lots of answers. I disagree. Sorry. If you have 100 pesos, I have good news for you. God owns all 100 pesos. He asked us to give him 10% a tithe and then offerings just from the love of God above that. Amen or not? <laughs> Pastors, am I telling the truth or am I telling falsehood? So God owns the whole thing. Oh, here's a test. If you look at your, your budget over the last month, see, <clears throat> pardon me, see where your money is flowing. And does it, does it reveal that God owns the money? Or does it reveal that you own the money? That's one test. Number two test. You want another test? I'm giving you practical things. When it comes to money, uh, how many of you, I'm going to ask you, so I'm going to put you on the spot. How many of you are worrying about your money? Yes or no? If it's yes, and I'm asking pastors too, if you're worrying about money now, raise your hand. Online and local. Are you worrying about it? <laughs> Pastors, are you worrying about your money? Okay. A local, are you worrying about your money? I have news for you. Shh. I'm being practical with you. If you're worrying about your money, then your money is not under the Lordship of Christ. It's under your Lordship. 
because how can I say this so bluntly to you? Because at times in my life, when this man has worried about money, it shows me that I'm trying, thank you, he just rescued me from some dangerous spider, I don't know. Uh, when I worry about money, I am showing that I'm in charge of my money. I'm worrying about how much I lose, how much I gain. I'm the boss. As students, if you're worrying about money, online, pastors, administrators, if you're worrying about money, it's not under the Lordship of Christ. He doesn't even want you to worry about money. He wants you to be a steward of it. He wants you to, but he wants to, be, he wants to actually manage it through you by the Spirit of God. Amen? So, powerful thing. Thoughts. Ooh, that's a tough one. Wow, how many of us know that we need more help in that area. I always need more help with my thoughts and my attitude. Amen to that. Social media, we already mentioned. Schedule, yes. Sleep, sleep. How late we're staying up. Pastors, local, how many of us have not put our sleeping patterns under the Lordship of Christ? We're staying up as late as we want to, not what is good for our health. How many of us, I'm asking online in here, how many of you have to raise your hands and say, that's a struggle to, to have your, your sleep patterns under the Lordship of Christ? Okay? Work. Patience. Food. Yes, food. Food can be dangerous. Whoa. Sometimes we have the attitude that we say, I can eat what I want because I paid for it. The question is, is your eating under the Lordship of Jesus Christ? Now, <clears throat> this lordship thing is not a small issue. If you and I are going to disciple someone else to Jesus and you want that person you're discipling to Jesus to help them live under the lordship of Jesus, what needs to happen in our life? We need to crown Jesus king over us, not us. I'm saying we need to crown Jesus Christ king over us so that his his crown is above us am i are you with me pastor this is an issue for us too and uh, a quick moment for online but it applies to students too many times our our time is not surrendered to jesus christ as pastors many times our work is not surrendered sometimes we work ourselves to death sometimes we work ourselves to an early grave and sometimes the opposite is also true. Sometimes we are wasting time as pastors and as leaders and wasting time as students. Am I right? And so our time needs to come into the Lordship of Jesus. The point is, I've been vulnerable with all of you saying some of the areas that God has had to confront me on. All of us have different things that need to come under the Lordship of Christ. But what's the highest motivation for this? My friends, it's something so precious, so precious. Go with me to Colossians 1, 27. And we're going to go to this right now. And it's going to be our last part of our session today. Colossians 1, 27. In Colossians 1, 27, I'm going to ask for someone on our online to please read this for all of us. I'm going to grab my Bible. I'm going to ask for one of our pastors or church planters, would you please read this passage? Pastor Kenneth, if you can find somebody up there, just uh, put your hand up. Online, if you're willing to read this passage, Colossians 1, 27. Students, are we there yet? Yes. Colossians 1, 27. Let's go. Okay, which one? Pastor Andit. Go ahead, please, Pastor. Colossians 1, 27. 1, 27, yes. Amen. <clears throat> now, let's pause a moment. Let's pause a moment and just pray. Because <clears throat> we're coming down to our final exercise and we need help right now by the Holy Spirit. Dear God in heaven, it's sometimes even too easy of a thing. And I'm speaking of myself. For me to very quickly say, Jesus is Lord. But it's another thing to actually 
live my life in every part, time, talent, treasure, social media, the list goes on and on, to actually make sure that, uh, that Jesus is king, that he has the highest authority over every area of my life. God, I'm asking that you would send the Holy Spirit right now, both to our friends online in all their homes, and that you'd help us right now. Speak to our hearts and help us to be willing to take this assignment, this holy assignment. In Jesus' name I'm praying. Amen. Here's the assignment for between now and tomorrow morning. And it is several fold. Okay, I'm going to write it down here. So please take out a piece of paper online and local. And uh, I'm going to just erase this here. <coughs> I hope you've been taking note of not only the text, but the exercises. Students, have you been writing these down so you can actually use it with friends and people, classmates, whatever? Same way for teachers, I hope you have. Have these been useful to you, students? Okay, I'm trying to give you ways to teach, not just to have just a text. So number one, number one assignment. So this is, uh, this is uh, to do to do before tomorrow. Number one. Sorry for the squeaking, okay? <laughs> Number one is, I'm going to say it this way, is make a covenant with who? With God. to awaken you to have unrushed time in his word and prayer okay are we clear? Okay, and you're doing that according to Isaiah 50 verse 4. So I'm just going to put it in brackets according to Isaiah 50 verse 4. Number two. I don't like the squeaking. I'm going to have to go to another one. <laughs> okay, number two. Number two. Uh, surrender. To Jesus as Lord. First thing. Amen? First thing. Uh, I'm going to say AM. Okay? In the morning. Now, a little different though. Remember, this is based on our two passages Philippians 2. 5 through 11, and what? Matthew 28, 18. Now, this is a little different though. I want you, when you do that, when I say I want you, I'm inviting you online and here. Do this in private and take your, 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 like I did this too, you know, and uh, take it before God. Take your chart, when you're doing the chart, and when you do this tomorrow morning, when God wakes you up, actually present it to God and say, because be real about this. Like the stuff that's out of boundary, talk to God. And when you're surrendering it to him, don't just stop by saying, Jesus, you're Lord. But pastors, local people, me too, I'm preaching it myself. We need to say, Jesus, on my list, the things that are out of bounds, how can I honor you as the highest authority in the areas of my life that need to come under your lordship that are out here on the sides. Ask him and on your knees cry out to him and say, God, I need to know what your wisdom is from heaven about how to honor you in the areas that are not honoring you currently. You got it? Okay. Yes or no? Yes. Are we good pastors on that? Yes? Last thing. Okay, so you're saying surrendering and 
you are asking, ask God, what needs to change? So all my life honors Jesus as Lord. Okay? Third thing, last thing, then we will go. Third thing. <clears throat> this is going to look a little different online pastors in here. It's important. Remember, the, this, this training time we have is to grow as a disciple and disciple maker. I'm asking that everyone here cry out to God. I'll write this down too. But you cry out to God and say, God, give me one person that I can teach these things to between now and tomorrow morning, not just with text, but also with those simple little like, activities. Did you write those down? The activities to do with them. Like make it interesting for them. Make it real. So... Teach them before tomorrow. Now, our pastors, some of you can do this with someone in your home. Some of you also, we already talked about doing this online with church members. You could actually even have a small group. Uh, isn't this possible, pastors? Either someone in your home or someone online with your church. I'm asking you to actually disciple someone with these two principles before tomorrow morning and to do that. So I'll put this in, in, into, a, I'll write it out. So disciple, disciple one person to live these two principles. Okay? Share your own testimony. Like, in other words, what does this mean to you? Like, you remember I was, I was open with you? I'm challenging you students and pastors. When you do this, don't just say, you should do this. But tell them with what you're comfortable with. Say, this is where I'm growing. This is where the Spirit of God's convicting me. And I'm inviting you to grow with me in these two areas. We're humble to them. We're not trying to go top down. We're sharing from our hearts. Are these three challenges, if you're willing to actually, with the help of Jesus Christ, if you're willing to do these three challenges between now and tomorrow morning, then please raise your hand if you're willing to do those three challenges. Okay? And online, I'm asking, if you're willing to do these three challenges, online pastors, please do thumbs up. I'm looking on this screen, then I'm going to go to the next screen. Amen. Let's go to the next screen. If you're willing to do these challenges, thumbs up. Amen. Now, last thing before we go. It's 12 o'clock, two minutes past. I believe this is God's time. I'm taking this very seriously. And I am going to do something that uh, I'm doing this by faith with you, okay? <laughs> so, uh... I'm going to give you, let's see where I can do it. I'm going to give you my email address and it's to be used this way. If between now and tomorrow morning, you have a special re prayer request. As you're doing these, you think, oh, I just want Pastor Don to be praying for me. This, this applies to our online as well as local. Then um, you're welcome to use my email address and send me something. Know that uh, I do, I, I'm a full-time volunteer working with the global ministry. So I'll do my best to, to pray on what you send me, if you send me something. But my volume is very high. But I'm saying for these next couple of days, I'm, I'm willing to, to do that. Just with this group locally and with our online for the Cavite mission. Okay? Amen? Amen. So uh, I don't want to erase this, so hopefully you can read this. So it's Don... Mac Lafferty, just my name, as is, all lowercase, Mac Lafferty at 
gmail.com. Okay? Don McLafferty at gmail.com. Maybe you can zero in with the camera. You can help the pastor see that. And uh, all I ask is, if you ask me, a, like, ask me to pray for something, I can do, for sure. If you ask me a question, <clears throat> because of my volume with mission work, it may take me longer to respond. But I'll try to answer. It just depends on how many of you ask questions. <laughs> if I get a hundred questions, I'm in trouble, okay? I hope this has been meaningful to you. Has this been timely? Has this been timely for you, pastors? So tomorrow morning, we report... And uh, we're going to report in this way. Uh, pastors online, please listen closely. I've been praying about how to do this with you. Uh, be pastors, well, you, <clears throat> when you go offline here just in a moment, I want you to please pray and ask for some other pastor on the Cavite Mission team, pastors, administrator, whatever, church planter, that you're going to be prayer partners with this during this, this week. <clears throat> and when I come to reporting time in the morning, I'm going to ask us to pause and you're going to call your brother in Christ and you're going to ask them, how did these three go? Are we clear online? Are we clear? Thumbs up if you're clear. Okay, next screen. Are we clear? So please choose somebody prayerfully, another pastor, church planner, administrator that you're going to do that with. Locally, right here. You should already, do you already have your prayer partner here or not? I don't know if you have it for the morning early. If you don't, I want you to decide before you walk away here in the next minute, who are you going to, to be accountable to on these three areas for tomorrow morning? Because when I ask the online to call and make their phone call for a couple minutes, I'm going to ask you locally to, to share with each other what did you do with the three challenges. This is real training, guys. Okay? Let's stand for prayer. <clears throat> Let's stand for prayer. Let's pray. <clears throat> Dear mighty God, thank you so much for every pastor, every church planner, every administrator, departmental director in the Cavite mission. Amen? We're just so thankful that we can do this together with them. Even though we can't be side by side, our hearts are with them, our prayers are with them. God, thank you for every student right here locally. What a, a precious thing. They have come here because they're hungry to learn how to grow as a disciple, but they also have a yearning in their heart to be a teacher of these principles, to be a disciple maker to others. And we have some faculty members here. Thank you, God, for them as well. Taking the time out of their busy schedule. Now, God, if you don't send the Holy Spirit to help us, both locally and, and across the Cavite mission, to do these three things, we will fall on our face. We won't even do it. We'll just let the busyness crowd us out. So I'm asking God that you will actually literally help us. Help the pastors and church planners tonight, their administrators, to actually go online or, or to do these things with someone for real. Help us students right here faculty to actually do this tonight. We're asking that tomorrow they'll be rejoicing. We'll, be, we'll have testimonies to share, both from online and here, for the glory of God. In Jesus' name, all the people said, Amen. God bless you and keep you, and we'll come back right here tomorrow, 9 a.m. And those of you who are here locally, also, uh, you're invited to come and join me at 6.30 for the call of Elijah with the little book. What? 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 Oh, I thought you were telling me a fly was on me. <laughs> yeah. Pray for that. It should be man to man, woman to woman, right? Oh, accountability should be uh, boy to boy, girl to girl. Okay? That's really important because we're going to get into personal things as we go along. So, boy to boy, girl to girl. Make sure you do that, please. Okay? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.